Hi, I'm Roy with Rugged Video, and I'd like to show you a little bit about our RV1 solution. Here we have a unit package ready to ship to a customer, and we'll be going through the unpacking and bench testing of the system. To start, each system includes a documentation packet. Inside, you're going to find a packing list, a wiring diagram specific to your unique system, as well as the installation, operations, technical supplement, and quick reference guide. Let's get started. So we just got done unpacking the system and all of the components. While unpacking, we just followed the included packing list, went through all the items individually, make sure everything was included, nothing was left out. The next step is going to be the bench test. The bench test is found in the technical supplement and is one of the first steps after unpacking the system. The bench test is simply connecting all the components on a bench using a wall power supply and this process allows you to get familiar with all the various components as well as just make sure everything's working prior to putting in the aircraft. We're going to use our wiring diagram that was included with the system and we'll just follow that to connect everything up. We connected a wall power supply to the wall over there. Let's get started. Here we supply power to the system. Included was also an external power cable. Obviously we don't need that for the bench test. Let's connect the camera. Here we have 20 foot extension cables. This cable here provides power to the camera and this cable transfers the HD video signal. All the connections are twist lock bayonet style connections that securely lock to the unit and the power supply is a twist lock. And we'll take our camera here. Now most of the cameras have three connectors like this. This one's for power. The yellow one is for composite, which is NTSC or PAL video and standard definition. And the black and gold connector is for high definition. We're going to be using that input. So there we have our camera connected. We'll go ahead and plug in media. Switch it to the USB position and in a few seconds that should start picking that up. You'll notice we also have a flashing blue light. That's our GPS signal. Let's go ahead and plug that in. It'll be an antenna receiver, something similar to this that plugs directly in and this will get the GPS signal and then also translate that into a signal that the system can read. We can also take the input from a Garmin 696, a G500, G1000, any typical navigation panel. And our light here should go solid, there we go. And you notice we no longer have a fault light. That means that we do have a valid video signal and we have media. So we're off to a good start. We have a couple unique components of the system. Um, here we have the audio input. And then this is a helicopter headset pass-through cable using the U174 type connector. We also make similar cables for general aviation and Bose headsets. And then we also make cables with flying leads that connect directly to your audio panel. This is unique because of the narrator, which is essentially a push to talk box. This particular customer is going to be using the system for an aerial patrol application. He wants to narrate the video while he's flying. This box allows him to use a push to talk and only capture audio when he wants. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. System's labeled. So now we have our audio input. And then if you have any way to test audio in the shop, great. Otherwise, sometimes you just have to wait till we get to the aircraft and you can actually use the aircraft headset. Next up, we have the switch. And this is going to be using our multi-link connector. And what this box essentially does is remote all of your triggers and all of your status LEDs, including the GPS LED. 
That allows you to see system status even if the unit's mounted remotely. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. There we go. And you can see it started recording. That's because our record switch is in the on position. Go ahead and turn that off. There we go, the system stopped recording. You also notice here we have a waypoint and a snapshot trigger. The waypoint is going to tag a specific point in the GPX file, which is your GPS file, which you can pull up in Google Earth or any third party software. And the snapshot actually takes a JPEG of the video image while you're recording, and it's saved right along that video file. So we'll go ahead and just do a, a test here. We'll do some recording. We'll take a snapshot as well as a waypoint. We'll just verify that's all functioning properly. That's done recording. Now we can go and pull the media. And it's important here to watch. We'll just make sure we get a fault light in just a moment here once the system realizes the media is disconnected. Now you can tell the record light is no longer lit, meaning that there's something wrong, and the fault light's blinking, which indicates that we removed media. Now we're going to go to a computer, make sure we have good video, a good snapshot, and a good GPS file.